Hi everybody, Louisa here behind the camera instead of in front of it. Um, this is Ben Martens from the Mid Maine Coast Fishermen's Association and he's gonna be making some flounder. We also have Jacob from New Center and he's gonna be filming and I think they're gonna be doing a little story about this. So this is gonna be really fun. And Ben, we're already. Show off, show off Mary too. Oh, Mary sorry. Here. We've got Mary also from MCFA. Hi, Mary. Hi. She looks really pleased to be on camera. <laughs> All right, Ben, it's over to you. All right, we plugged in. Nope. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Now we are. Well, perfect. Well, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, my name is Ben Martens, and I'm the executive director of the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association. And we work with Maine's community uh, fishermen to promote sustainable fisheries and vi vibrant fishing communities for the next generation of Mainers. And so a lot of our work historically has been focused on policies and regulations and science and making sure that the fishermen are heard in the political realm. But uh, we also need to talk about seafood because ultimately what our fishermen are doing is feeding us when they leave the docks and uh, go and catch fish and come back home and bring us these delicious, delicious morsels from the Gulf of Maine. So um, what we wanted to do tonight though was show off some fish that people might not be as used to seeing or cooking or playing with. And so one of those species that we're gonna be talking about tonight is a type of flounder. Uh, this is some uh, gray sole or witch flounder. This uh, is uh, comes from the, the Gulf of Maine sashimi uh, cut this up and um, did a great job processing this. This was caught by a fisherman out of Port Clyde. His name's Randy Cushman. He's a member of my board, uh, was a founding member of our organization, and is a uh, fourth generation fisherman out of that community. And so um, Randy's actually out fishing right now. Uh, he wishes he could be here as well to watch me try and cook some of his delicious fish, but uh, he's doing what he does best, which is catching them. So uh, let's get started and talk a little bit about this flounder. So gray sole or witch flounder uh, is a, uh, is a, a right eyed flounder. So uh, right eyed, why do you say that? So flounder are, uh, when they're born, they have eyes on both sides of their head, like any other fish that you might see. And over the first four to uh, 10 months of their life, they pick a side and their eyes shift and roll. And so flounders are actually sideways on the bottom of the ocean and that's how they move along. And so different flounders have their eyes move in different directions and gray sole or witch flounder is a right eyed species of flounder. So what I'm doing here is I've got this fish and this was, uh, this was frozen previously. Um, and one of the things we often like to talk about with folks is um, there's this horrible misconception that frozen fish isn't good fish. Um, and it's actually value add, right? Like when you freeze something, it gives it more time um, in your pantry. You've got more time and flexibility to use it and it preserves the freshness of fish. And fish, fish freezes really well. If you can say that 10 times fast, uh, good for you. So um, this was frozen and um, we defrosted it today. And so you can see it's still like really nice color. Um, a lot of it's got still rigid. It's great, a uh, great, great quality fish. And, um, and so what we did with Gulf of Maine sashimi is we asked them to cut this Munair, Munair? Say it for me. Munier. Munier style, <laughs> all right? And um, we did that because so flounders, because they're sideways, they've got fins on both sides of their body. And typically what you do when you get a fish is you get the filet of the fish. And it's hard to get a big filet out of a flounder, especially some of the flounders that we've been catching in the Gulf of Maine. And so um, this is a different way to play with flounders. So what I've been doing is I've been patting it off because we want to get some of the excess moisture um, away from it. And then I'm going to take a little bit of flour. Oh, actually, first I'm going to turn on my stove and get this cooking. And so I'm heating up the stove. I'm putting this at a, a medium, medium to high heat. Um, and uh, I'll be adding some olive oil. I've got regular olive oil that I'm putting in here. Uh, I, some folks will put ver uh, extra virgin olive oil in. Um, I find that that smokes a little bit too fast. So I use regular olive oil. Um, you can also use clarified butter if you would prefer that. And I tend to be a little bit generous with the olive oil because it helps make sure things don't stick. And it's delicious. Olive oil is great. So um, I patted the fish dry. I'm gonna add a little bit of flour to a bowl. And, um, and then I'm gonna salt and pepper the, the fish. Uh, you can do whatever variety of, um, you know, coarse grind, fine grind, whatever you kind of want to do um, with your fish. And I'm gonna get both sides of it um, with a little salt and pepper. 
And then in this mixture of flour, um, I'm going to add a little chili powder. And this is not in the recipe that we, uh, we've got on uh, the Now You're Cooking website. We'll throw it on our website as well. Um, but I just find that adding a little bit of heat to any recipe um, just brings out flavor a little bit. And so I don't add a lot. I just add a little bit. And, um, and then I'll just kind of mix it in and throughout. And then I'm going to sprinkle the flour over the padded dry fish. I'm going to wrap it in, cover it up, coat it up. And this helps get rid of some of that moisture. And we'll add a nice little texture to the fish in the pan. And so look at that. Super, super simple, easy, right? So now we've got this beautiful, beautiful cut of fish that came from the Gulf of Maine. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that our pan over here is getting a nice coat of, butter, of uh, olive oil on it. And it's heating up nicely. And then we toss that fish in. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to let that cook uh, for about three to four minutes per side. Uh, and um, while that's starting to cook, uh, I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be taking some, uh, some garlic and chopping up some garlic to add into the mix. And you don't want to add the garlic too early because if you put the garlic in too early, it starts to really get burned. Um, and so this recipe calls for uh, one clove of garlic. Um, and, uh, but it's garlic. So if you want to get aggressive and throw in three or four or an entire head, you can do that too. And um, last night I did this dish in preparation uh, for this and I had a bunch of garlic that just was asking to get used. And so I, uh, I put in some big chunks of it. It's like I'm going to do tonight. And, um, and then like you find those little crispies that you can kind of cover over and um, it's just delicious. I love adding garlic to everything and I do it a little bit too much probably for uh, my wife and children to um, experience the bad breath that comes with that, but it's worth it. So we're putting some garlic in now and this will add just a little bit more of um, sweetness to the, the fish as it's cooking up. And while that's starting to cook, I'm also going to be cutting up, um, I've probably got about uh, two tablespoons of butter that we're going to be playing with towards the end of this. And then we've also got a little bit of parsley and this is just for garnish. And so right now I'm just killing time because fish is so easy to cook. And one of the reasons why we asked Now You're Cooking to invite us in and talk about seafood is because um, we often find when we talk to people about seafood that they're really intimidated to cook it. And especially stuff that they don't recognize when they're at the supermarket or go to the fishmonger, right? They see things and they look around and they're like, ooh, cod, haddock, I recognize those species, salmon. Uh, and what we have then is like people tend to drift towards the same species over and over and over again. And we have so many other great things that are coming out of the Gulf of Maine that are locally caught, that are sustainably caught. Uh, and we need to give those things an opportunity to shine. And so inviting people to bring these fish home, cook them at home in easy, simple ways is a great, great way for us to support our local communities, support the fishermen, uh, and eat healthy. So, as we're letting side two start to cook, um, I want to talk a little bit about fish health because uh, the we had some really interesting things. Like, there's often a misconception around seafood where you ask people, like people say, "Oh, well, what what should I be eating when it comes to seafood? What kinds of seafood food should I eat?" And the um, the USDA just came out with new guidelines that basically said we have not been eating enough seafood as a nation and that more and more people who are younger, pregnant women, everybody needs to be eating more seafood because it's really good for your mind, it's good for your body, it's good for the environment. And so one of the things that we are trying to encourage is when you go to the supermarket, when you are thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner that week, that day, that seafood is more and more of a priority and takes up a bigger part of our plate. In the United States, we only eat about 16 pounds of seafood per person, per capita. And that is um, roughly on par with turkey. Most people only eat turkey and sandwiches once in a while, and then on Thanksgiving. 
and uh, we eat nine pounds per person of avocado. So we need to be doing a little bit more, especially as Mainers, where we are so tied to the ocean, uh, to this way of life, to eat better. And it all goes right back into the community. So as I was saying about this fish, so this, this fish is caught um, by a small boat out of Port Clyde. Uh, this fisherman's been uh, fishing for these fish his entire life. And um, he started our organization because he wanted to leave something behind that was better for the next generation of Maine fishermen. And so we fight for sustainable regulations. We fight for good science to make sure that it's going into that regulation process. And, um, and so he's, he's trying to leave this world in, in a little bit better place. And we often get in that misconception of like, well, is seafood okay to eat? Is fish from the Gulf of Maine sustainable? And um, it is. And we really encourage folks who are thinking about those types of things to reach out to our organization and um, the fishmongers along the coast to have those conversations. So, all right. Uh, I lost a little bit of the skin there, but you know what? That's what happens. Pull this back a little bit. All right. So, we've got a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful filet here. Or not filet. Munair cut of fish. And it's all cooked through. And so what you can see here is when you've got um, this chunk right here is this the, what would normally be a fillet of fish. And so what you can do is you take your fork and you just kind of pull along and you can eat along here and you get this great, great flaky, flaky white fish. And uh, you know, if you get adventuresome, you can kind of pull into the, some of the meat that's along here as well. Um, there's also a line and you can see it on this piece here that we didn't cook. So this is actually um, the row of the fish. And this is something that has a little bit of a different texture, a different flavor. Um, but in this cut, you get to experience that part of the seafood. And uh, normally when you just go to the supermarket and you buy a filet of fish, uh, that's not what you get. You miss those other pieces of the seafood experience and um, what kind of makes eating this type of, of fish pretty special and, and unique. So um, I'll stop there and see if you have any questions or if there's any that are coming in from the audience. Not from the audience, but where can we buy this in this area, in the Mid-Coast area? Yeah, so this came from um, a company called Gulf of Maine Sashimi. And uh, Gulf of Maine Sashimi is out of Portland, Maine, and it is this great small uh, new business that is really focused on a mission-driven um, you know, purpose when it comes to like supporting the fishermen and getting the best fresh local seafood out in the public. Um, but there's a lot of other places up and down the coast um, in the Bath area. You've got Cantrell's. You've got these other uh, places that you can always walk into and ask for local seafood. And uh, we're incredibly lucky in Maine that we have places uh, up and down the coast where you can get that local, local fish. Perfect. Unplug here. Um, ben, thank you so much. That was really informative. And I got to tell you guys, it smells amazing. And um, I think we're going to maybe put a little, hey, you're still on camera. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to add the butter. Oh. It's all right. It's good. I forgot to add it. So you normally would do that before you so take it out of it. Right before I take it off, I throw the butter in and it just, it brings out this beautiful, beautiful flavor and then do a squirt of lemon. On, nice. On the top, so. Awesome. I, and, I and thank you, Jacob. Yeah, you're on camera too. All right, everybody, thank you so much. We will see you next week. And I'm going to be making strawberry shortcake with whole wheat biscuits, and it's going to be delicious. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.